Welcome back to another Ch Ch Chaz 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 McMichael production. Go make daddy some money. I'm giving this little freedom blaster two thumbs up. In Remember Shooting Nation, Chaz McMichael says that you can buy the CZ Compact L with confidence. The fuck did he just call it? Go for Chaz. Chaz, baby, hey, we all just watched it, loved it, loved it. Uh. One little note, it's, it's called a P01. Pretty sure I can read, bro. Compact L. Chaz out. Gun tuber man child. Hello, Bob. How are you, my friend? Cut the shit, Yuri. I got a problem with the shipment of pistols I just ordered. Impossible. They're perfect. I made them myself. Yeah, except for the fact that they say Compact L instead of P01. What the hell is a Compact L? It's like P01, but better. You can't just change the name of a pistol, Yuri. I've got import paperwork and marketing literature, website updates. Yes, I'm sure it's very difficult. What with the typing and all. Thank God I only have to make them with my bare hands. Okay. I can fix this. I can sell these. What's, uh, what's different about them? It's safety, not decocker. That's it. Yes, what else you want? Foot massage? Why do you call it a compact L? Okay, Don Draper. Marketing man, what do you call it? I don't know, P02? Capitalist and your sequels. Matrix should have been one movie. Look what they did to my poor Neil. That's right, two discontinued pistols in a row. This guy's a sellout. Shilling it for the man, bro. Just a puppet of the corporate elite. Cliff notes, if I could only have one center fire do everything pistol, so that'd be truck gun, EDC, range toy, nightstand gun, that cost under $1,000, this would be it. CZ75 Compact L. Before we get into particulars, I wanna say a huge thanks to all the support in the comments section, everybody who's liked and subscribed to the channel. If you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It's way more satisfying to make videos when I know people are watching. I'm into voyeurism. Also, I'm thinking about using YouTube Shorts to get more updates out there more often. If that's something you guys would be interested in, please let me know in the comments below. Timestamps in the description below because we're fancy like that. This is a CZ75 Compact L. What in the hell is the CZ75 Compact L? It was a limited import from the custom shop out of Mesa, Arizona. It's a P01 frame, but with a safety instead of a decocker. So P01s traditionally are the compact alloy frame with a rail and a decocker in nine millimeter. Great pistol, everybody loves them, but this one has a safety instead of a decocker. And in addition to that, because it's a custom shop gun, it's got Meprolite night sights, a stainless steel guide rod, a competition hammer and some trigger work, some internal spring swapping and knob polishing, and it is a super kick-ass gun. This pistol's been discontinued for a while, but if you wanted to recreate one, all you would do is get a P01 Omega. So the Omega trigger system versus a standard P01 allows you to swap uh, decockers for safeties. And then if you wanted to add the other custom shop bits and bobs around there, you could just order that as you see fit. Or another alternative is every couple of years, there's some sort of compact frame with a rail floating around, some sort of special. So there was a shadow line compact a couple years back Currently, there's a, a steel frame P01 floating around, which is super cool, and it also has a safety instead of a decocker. So keep your eyes out for some sort of special or just build one with an Omega. Enough with the particulars. How does this thing feel to shoot? This is one of those pistols that you can just shoot without having to think about shooting it. It's a CZ75, right? It feels like shooting any of my other CZ75s. There's a reason that they're kind of the undisputed king of ergos. Um, super comfy, points naturally, fits the hand like a glove. It's a great pistol to shoot. Having said that, it's a compact and it's an aluminum framed compact. So it's about four to five ounces lighter than my steel frame CZ75 compact. 
In fun fact, even with the light mounted on it, it's still a couple ounces lighter than my steel framed compact. So it's a little bit snappier to shoot. Now, another way to frame that is that even though it's snappier to shoot than my steel frame compact, it's still a quarter pound heavier than a Glock 19. So it's not super snappy by any means. This is right at the perfect weight where it is as light as I would want to go for a pistol that I would want to shoot all day long at the range, right? Like you could, you could shoot a lightweight pistol at the range all day and it might not be super enjoyable. This is a gun that I look forward to shooting three, four, five hundred rounds through at the range in a single day in one sitting. In filming this, I shot 300 rounds a couple days ago at the range in like an hour and a half. And it was a joy the entire time. It never feels like a chore. Why did I want a safety instead of a decocker? Did Wyatt Earp need a decocker? No. He lived on the edge. Substandard dental care and no decockers. <laughs> or safeties for that matter. All of my pistols are set up this way. So they're either single action only with a safety or they're double single with a safety. So I'm super used to sweeping safeties. It's my standard manual of arms. It's not, I don't feel like I'm missing anything for not having a decocker. If you like decockers, that's cool. They exist for a reason, right? Some people prefer automatic transmissions and like to put ketchup on their steak. You know, everybody's different, no judgment. I've played with a few decockers in my time. Typically, uh, typically on SIGs, uh, they've been fine. They are a machine and so they are more reliable than people. Having said that, I still don't trust them. 5G and chemtrails and decockers. Satan's trifecta. One amazing bit of wizardry on this gun is the ability to engage the safety with a hammer down. Look at that. It's perfect for me because I carry in an ANR appendix rig and the ability to have safety on hammer down offers me maximum testicle retention. This is not the case with most CZ-75s. No habla inglés. Me gusta la biblioteca. Let's talk about the trigger. I'm a trigger snob and this is as nice of a trigger as I would want on a do-all EDC slash truck gun slash nightstand gun. Could it be better? Sure. But any better and it's just superfluous. We've hit the point of diminishing returns with this trigger. Uh, I'm gonna clear it for the 800th time for you internet babies. Single action, it's nice. It's really nice. There's a bunch of take up and then once you hit the wall, you're solid at the wall. Nice break. It rolls through a tiny bit, but not a lot. There's not really a whole lot of creep and there's zero over travel. The only thing that's a little lame is that the reset it's pretty damn long, but it's still a really nice trigger. And the great thing is that it is so much smoother on double action than most of the factory double action, single action CZs are. Don't jack with the trigger. It's like, it's like shaving truffles on everything. Leave my mac and cheese alone. It's good. My mac and cheese is good, brah. Having a rail is a must for a do everything gun. I have an Enforce APLC mounted for the past four or five years and it's been fantastic, which is more than I can say for the TLR3 I had mounted previously. I have no idea how I cracked this bezel, but it died. So I went ahead and swapped it out for the APLC. Uh, it has been fantastic. Um, one thing I would highly suggest is anything that you have a light mounted on, I would super, super, super recommend shooting a night match if you can find one. So right before I left LA, I shot one of the last Deadwood Boys USPSA night matches before Wes Thompson sold the range. And it was a hell of a lot of fun. I learned a lot of things. Um, number one is that when you go to reload and you break your grip to reload, your light is pointed straight in the air so you can't see anything. 
you immediately go from seeing your targets and where you're going to seeing absolutely nothing because your light is pointed up in the night sky. Also found out that the powder that I was using for my reloads was not low flash, but good news is that it didn't really destroy your vision as much as you would think that it would. So these Meprolite night sights, they were four or five years old at the time and now they're nine years old, so they're getting progressively dimmer, but I was still able to see the sights no problem at night, even with the increased flash. How's the reliability? Reliability is super important, especially on a do-everything gun. Uh, I've had this pistol for nine years, but in that nine years, I've actually shot it less than pretty much any of my other CZ pistols. So it only has about 4,000 rounds through it. Now, having said that, those 4,000 rounds have happened in 115 degree dusty desert, 15 degree dusty desert, super humid East Texas, concealed carry, belly button lint, dust bunnies, spilling nightstand drinks on it, uh, extended periods of time with no lubrication. In that time, I've had exactly four malfunctions, which is more than I would like to have in 4,000 rounds. Having said that, all four of those malfunctions are pretty sure my fault because they all came from some sort of reloads, either sketchy commercial reloads or sketchy me reloads. So let's talk through those. Two were from the same batch of commercial reloads and it were light primer strikes. And I have a sneaking suspicion they were some really like hard, cheap commie primers. Uh, but I had two light strikes out of that batch, have never had a light strike again with any other ammo I've ever fed through it. The third malfunction that I had was a total lockup because it was a not resized piece of brass. So it went about 75% of the way into battery, but didn't get far enough into battery for me to be able to actually fire it, which I wouldn't have wanted to because it wasn't in battery all the way, but also it snugged up in the barrel so tight, I had a hard time actually getting that round out. So that was less than ideal, but it was because it was a non-resized piece of brass, so that's gonna happen. The fourth malfunction I had was during the night shoot and I actually got it on camera. I don't know what it was because it was dark, uh, but I was able to clear it um, in pitch black, I'm assuming it was an ammo problem considering they were that that situation was my reloads so had i shot proper reloads or factory ammo through this i don't think i would have had any issues with reliability at all another thing that's slightly different between the p01s and the steel frame compacts is that any of the aluminum frame compacts have a little attempt at grip i won't even call it checkering because technically it's not a checker pattern on the front and back strap compared to the standard 75s. So the standard 75s are super slick. They're real slippery, real slippery like on the front and back strap. There's absolutely nothing. Uh, on the P01, they do have some grooves, vertical grooves going on the front strap and the back strap, which is better than nothing, but it's kind of half-assed. I feel like if they'd spent like an extra 30 seconds, they could have done like proper checkering and it would be a hundred times better. So is it bad? No. Could they have made it slightly better? You probably. The palm swell grips are great. They're rubber, uh, perfect shape. I don't have any problem with them. I wanna put some lock grips on there for no other reason than they look cool and I hear that they're really comfy and really tacky, but there's really nothing wrong with the factory rubber grips. I have no complaints. I'm just a douche. The stainless steel guide rod is nice, but I cannot tell any difference at all whatsoever in a stainless guide rod versus a plastic guide rod. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it was ever really intended to have any performance enhancements. I think the purpose of it, I'm assuming, was to not have your plastic guide rod get chewed up after about 7,500 to 10,000 rounds, which is what happened on my Shadow. So I've had to replace my Shadow's plastic guide rod twice because they just kind of get chewed up after about 7,500, 10K, something like that, and that's not gonna happen with a stainless guide rod. But if I were you and you were contemplating buying a stainless guide rod, I don't know, I mean, do it if you want to, but you're not gonna notice a difference while shooting it. 
Final thoughts, I love this pistol. If you've got the opportunity to get a P01 with a safety or even just a standard P01 with a decocker, you're not gonna be disappointed. It's a great do everything pistol. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. Drop me a comment below if you've got any questions on it, your experience with this pistol, if you've ever seen one. Also, let me know if you guys would be interested in YouTube shorts or anything else y'all wanna see. Later.